I am shallow, or rather, my art is. I only really draw for fun or for class, but either way, people peer over my shoulder asking me, you know, what does it mean? Usually, the answer is nothing. I don't draw so that critics can drop words like profound, challenging, meaningful. To say that we should listen to the artwork could equally be applied to a urinal, which hilariously enough, it has. Even though the artist Marcel Duchamp didn't mean for this piece to be anything more than a practical joke, it became a revolutionary piece of modern art. People called a urinal profound. <coughs> but how does the word profound in any way validate your work? This is a big topic to handle, I know, and the lines do get a little fuzzy here and there. I'm almost asking what art is for. But I truly believe that you are not under any obligation to imprint some underlying meaning as viewer, on your viewers. And maybe this is me just trying to defend myself and my lack of profoundness, but as a budding teenage artist, this shouldn't be your responsibility. My name is Alex Hill, and I'm one of those people that when someone brings me up in conversation, someone else will usually go, hey, that's that girl who's really good at art, right? I love that. That's who I wanted to be since I was like 11. But it does come with some drawbacks. Most of these people who refer to me this way are my peers, so teenagers. And although teenagers aren't known for being you know, incredibly profound, they still seem to have this automatic reflex built in whenever they see art. What does it mean? Why is her hair white? Why did you draw him holding a bow and arrow? Is she bald to raise cancer awareness? Are his eyes blue because you were sad when you drew him? I don't ever have the answers to any of these questions. I just draw for the fun of it, which is why I love kids. They don't pry into the meaning of my work. They simply are able to appreciate it and for my, appreciate me for my talent and appreciate the work for its beauty. It's of course amazing if your art is both visually stunning and has deep meaning, or is ugly and has deep meaning. Creating deep meaning through visual manipulation, I believe, is a skill in and of itself, but it doesn't mean your art loses value if it lacks deep thinking behind it. But even if you made a piece with a very specific motive behind it, oftentimes people will make up the meaning on their own. Like this one time I made this text art for a 2D design class. Everyone thought it was super profound because within the text I was talking about neurons and how today's generation is so different neurologically from the previous one. But really what I had done was I had just copy-pasted my psychology homework from the previous night into Photoshop. <laughs> and this other time, I was showing someone my portfolio, and they stumbled upon this piece, simply titled Butterfly. So most of the pieces in my portfolio explain what the piece is meant to be about, but this one was simply titled Butterfly, and they had this confused sort of look on their face, like, and immediately, immediately asked, what does this mean? <coughs> Feeling pressured, I made something up about how boys are never portrayed with fragility and that their emotional boys are always forced back into a box. But really, I just drew a boy covered in butterflies because I thought it would be cool. <laughs> Ironically, in the piece I had actually meant to mean exactly this, it was totally misconstrued and people thought it was some weird feminist piece about how boys really should not be allowed to cry and that boys who have emotion are weak. M missing the sarcasm of the title entirely, of course. So you see, it doesn't matter. No matter what you do, someone's going to interpret it differently. There's this really famous paint landscape painting series called The Joy of Painting by Rob Ross. And I love that title because it perfectly encompasses what I think it should be enough from an artist. Why can't we just paint for the joy of it, the sorrow of it, or the anger of it even? You know, us artists are emotional people, so oftentimes our art is an outlet for emotion. It's a way for us to vent, and there's no shame in that. People might criticize you for talking about your problems rather than the world's problems, but it's not your responsibility. People used to think that lowbrow art or modern art was below fine art, but now the order seems to be meaningless art below social commentary art. Artists are expected to use their art as a platform for some sort of political movement. But this is really unfair. Really unfair to artists like me who probably will be going into the animation and movie industry where we draw art like fantasy landscapes, design characters, 
develop visual concepts. In this field, your art doesn't really tend to be profound, just beautiful. I, it's great if, you're, if you want to raise awareness with your art. But at the end of the day, you can't really solve the world's problems in a painting. And I don't know if I like art that pretends it can. I don't blame you if you want. Oftentimes, political art is ugly because the world is ugly. And I don't blame you if you want to if you don't want to graffiti starving children on walls or paint mountains of trash when you could be painting mountains lush with flowers. I don't blame you if you want your art to be beautiful instead of shocking. Both have their values, but my point is your, goal, your, girl holding, your painting of a girl holding a balloon bursting with butterflies is just as valid as Banksy's girl holding a balloon of no future. I draw a lot of fan art, and fan art typically doesn't mean much I draw a character because I enjoy the film or the TV show, or I draw an actor or singer because I admire them for their talent or their looks. And then I share it in a public platform like Tumblr or DeviantArt for people who have something in common with it to admire. It doesn't really mean anything more than that, unless, of course, it's someone from the fandom. They would probably get some deeper meaning out of it. But this art is not unlike Renaissance art that we admire so deeply. Michelangelo and God and Man, the creation of Adam painted on the Sistine Chapel, that's essentially just Bible fan art. It's shared, think about it though, really, like it's shared in a public place for people with common interests to admire. And only those who are part of the fandom per se, in this case it would be religion, would truly understand what the piece is meant to be about, and they would appreciate it in its entirety. But it's not really any deeper than that. Of course, it's probably deeper to the people who do have a religious connection to this, but at the end of the day, Michelangelo was commissioned by the church. And yes, he did come up with the composition and the idea, but he was probably thinking about money or political protection from the church that artists often sought at the time. And smart artists these days, we use our art to make profit. People call us sellouts sometimes because our art isn't deep, and we're doing art to please others, but there's no shame in that either. If you love something and you can make money from it, I see no issue. Another popular art, another very famous artist that most people know is Sargent, and I don't see anything in his work except a mastery over a medium. In his case, it was oils. I don't really love his art for its message, although it may be a good, profound one, but I love his art for his skill and his ability to translate the world around us into brush strokes. Still, I'm sure that there are many people who are able to find deep meaning in Sargent's work, but we can never really know what Sargent himself meant. My point is, Art will always exist, and people will always be there to create meanings, but it's not always the responsibility of us artists. The world today is, the world we live in now, especially now, we need simple beauty more than ever. Our world is full already of like economic, political problems, existentialism. The last place we need to see it in is our art. People sometimes forget that something can exist simply because it is beautiful. Normally what happens is you have one or two paintings that really speak something profound and touches something deep within you and then in turn touches something deep within your audience. But that's not always the case. Oftentimes we draw things for the most trivial reasons like, hey, I like that guy's mask, so I'm going to draw him. Or, hey, your shirt's cute, so I'm going to draw you. But, a lot of, but then people often forget that this is okay. Like, they want more from us. Like, if your art, if you can't see meaning in art, then maybe you, you too are meaningless. In art class, they push us really, really hard to make our work more meaningful. Teachers ask you during critique about your art, why are you using red? Why did you pick this composition? They'll often nail you if all you can come up with is, um, because I like red. But this can be really good for us students because we take art class, after all, to learn. Though when overdone, it can become extremely fake. 
it feels shallow, it feels wrong, it doesn't feel like us. And I think that's one of the worst things you could do to an artist. It stagnates our creativity rather than push it, pushes it forward. People want me to create deep art, and I'm not really sure why. I mostly create art right now in my life as a teenager so that I can move on and be, go to a good school and get an education so hopefully one day, once I'm worldlier, I can make that deep art everyone expects me to. But right now, it's unfair of you to ask, but at any stage in someone's life, it's unfair of you to ask them to put meaning that they're not willing to offer. So, try what Duchamp did. Put an upside down urinal in an art gallery and see what happens. An art student will probably come up to you and be able to give you some really amazing meaning. But at the end of the day, it's an upside down urinal. Duchamp, after all, meant it as a joke, but it became revolutionary. And he wasn't even trying to make art. So no matter what you do, people will always interpret things differently. And it's unfair to expect the artist to do it for you. If going to an art gallery and picking apart pieces and trying to find its meaning makes you happy and fulfills something in you, then by all means do it. But don't expect an off artist to give more than they have to offer. So, to all the artists out there, draw what is beautiful. Draw what is weird. Draw what you like. Draw what you love. Draw what you want. If you're passionate about something, your art is always enough. Thank you. <laughs>